<laughs> we can talk about that in the Q&A. Um, <laughs> okay, the story I'm going to tell you today is uh, about a friend of mine. His name is Tiger Lad. And uh, I have to give him a bit of an introduction. So Tiger Lad is just a boy, and Tiger Lad is just a tiger. But really, Tiger Lad is neither a boy nor a tiger. One day, he went in search of something new to be, so everybody would stop calling him a girl. Uh, and the story that I'm going to tell you, oh my god, I forgot our stretches. We have to do stretches. But you can have your attention on the stretches. Okay, okay. Um, also in the book, it told me, as storytellers, um, we need to stretch, and we do have to do storyteller stretches. And it also told me a lot about what happens in the minds of the kids or slash people who are watching the stories, and the value of storytelling, and why we need to keep storytelling programming in our libraries <laughs> is, <laughs> this is what the book has brainwashed me to believe in, <laughs> but it's not brainwashing, it's true. Um, <laughs> is that this magical process happens when you listen to a story and you get to imagine it yourself. So, so that is like how your brain grows and it gives you creative freedom. So I'm not going to describe my characters, you're going to imagine my characters. And um, we need to do a couple stretches. So what I want you to do is think of a mountain. I want you to think of an East Coast mountain. Maybe something in the Adirondacks. And now, turn it into a West Coast mountain. Yeah. I'm from the East Coast. But seriously, they're really big out there. Um, so grow it, grow it, grow it, grow it. Get that mountain in your head. Now, turn that mountain into the entire world. And I want you to hold the entire world in your head. To the count of five. One, two, three. Three, four, five. Now start shrinking it, shrinking it, shrinking it, shrinking it. We're back to West Coast Mountain. Shrink, 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 shrink. East Coast Mountain. Shrink, 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 shrink to a house. Shrink to this saloon that we're in. Shrink to a person. Shrink to a pencil. Shrink to the eraser of your pencil. Shrink to um, an entire colony of ants that live on your pencil. Shrink to those ants tiny dolls that they play with. And that's enough. Come back up. Up back to the ant, back to the eraser, back to the pencil, back to your hand, back to your body. <laughs> oh boy. That hurt more than I thought. Okay. Okay. So your brains are exercised. Now shake it out. Just think about pinballs. <laughs> think about pinballs. And okay. And back. Okay. <laughs> now we are ready to begin the story. And this is the story of how Tiger Lad entered the Hall of Mothers. One day, walking through the forest in a familiar state of hypersensitivity, Tiger Lad was struck with a sudden longing. A longing he had come to love and dread. To find himself a mother who would fuck him till he cried. Though long harbored, this longing had yet to run its course, for Tiger Lad was, at best, a baby who had not yet learned to realize his dreams. Oh, he had himself, it's true, a bank of older siblings who would no doubt oblige to beat him to a pulp. And yet... Tiger Lad sat on a stump overhanging a stream, crawled out to its edge and dipped his tail into the current, sighing and preparing to dream away his thoughts. But no sooner had he closed his eyes than sprung awake again, for nibbling lightly at his tail was a fish he'd never seen before. Hello, said Tiger Lad, let go my tail. And upon reflection, hey, what type of fish are you? The fish emitted smoke like steam from one of many spouts and spoke, I'm a dream fish, Tiger Lad. What kind of creature are you? At this, Tiger Lad rolled over to his back and sighed again. I'm a dream boy, I suppose, since all I ever do is dream, and nothing that I am is true. Come to think of it, I am most likely dreaming you. At this, the fish emitted a stream of stream and steamed, just because you can't identify a person doesn't mean they don't exist. 
I'll have you know I came to you. I could smell your dream a mile away, stinking up the river with its blandness, not to mention overtones of self-pity, shame, delusion. Okay, okay, Tiger Lad muttered. I get the message. My wishing is a waste of time. I'll try to will my mind to obsess on something more to your flavor. Wrong, the fish declared. The blandness of your dream is not thematically related, although, of course, I've tasted it more times than I have cared to. But detail, dear tiger, is what gives me cheap or rare food. Yes, Tiger Lad relented rather readily. If I thought through the details of the scene, how she takes my neck in her teeth and carries me to bed, how she growls low and close, and how when she is done, she smooths out all my fur, well, I admit that you'd have a more flavorful meal. But then I fear my chances of it happening the way I want, of finding her, would drop from slim, they say, to none. Nonsense, the fish replied. If that's your fear, then why don't you work backwards? Find your lady, play it out, and dream about it after. Huh. Impossible, said Tiger Lad. I know nobody'd want to be a mother of a not-quite-tiger, not-quite-lad at that. Wrong again, the fish declared and swam a little circle around Tiger Lad's stump. This dream of yours is possible as much as any other. Jump in and grab my back, my boy. Next stop, the Hall of Mothers! <laughs> this river and my life, Tiger Lad began to think, have never swept so fast. But no sooner had he thunk it and the thought became his last. For clutching tight as possible onto the fish's back, Tiger Lad had pressed his eye into its topmost spout, and what he spied there stopped his train of thoughts like a trestle bridge blown out. A dream so vast, it was an ocean. Now Tiger Lad had been to the desert, and he knew about distance. Blanket you can sleep in. He'd been to the forest, and he knew about proximity. When a demon leaves you, what does it take? But he'd never seen the inside of someone's dream before, and now he knew why. A dream is an enormity so startling it can topple you. And Tiger Lad was toppled. When he opened his eyes, he was on the beach, coughing up ocean. <clears throat> but the water in his lungs was finite, and that's how he knew he wasn't stuck in someone's dream, but stranded on a desert island. And with the deepening despair that only one who is utterly